adult animation. You'd think that giving cartoonists freedom to draw or write whatever they like, you'd end up with some freaking amazing pieces of work. Well, you'd be wrong. How on earth is it that cartoons with the most creative freedom have ended up producing some of the most shockingly bad animated shows of all time? Can't quite work that one out. As hard as it may be to believe, I actually don't hate this genre in its entirety. The opposite side of the spectrum will be explored in the future. But for today, we're going to be looking at the vile, the lazy, the pitiful, what I personally consider to be the absolute worst adult cartoons of all time. Keep in mind that this list is just my silly personal opi- oh, 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 let's not go there again. <laughs> Personal list, personal opinions. Nothing that I say here should be taken as fact. We good? We good. Now then, ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your F-bombs and let's get right into this thing! Is it too late to turn back? Thank you for coming, everyone! Please lower your voices, I'm speaking! Alan Gregory is... Uh, he's an irritating little dude. He's a rich seven-year-old kid that goes to elementary school for the first time at the beginning of the series, and everybody hated it. The school kids, the teachers, the audience, the critics. People really did not respond well to this snobby cartoon. Both Alan Gregory and his father are so infuriating by the way they think they're better than everyone else. They interrupt and manipulate everyone around them, and they're just big old jerks. I mean, besides the main character, there's not too much I can say that's absolutely awful about the show. But that's just it. The kid's so unlikable that it ruins everything. Okay, do you? Do I what now, sweetheart? Wanna have lunch? No, but I'd like to schedule lunch when you learn how to speak English now. The episodes are such a long, boring drag, and every obnoxious sentence that comes out of Alan Gregory's mouth makes it seem even longer. Alan's forced best friend is my favorite character, but I just can't figure out why. Hmm, maybe it's the design? Maybe it's the interactions? Maybe it's the, oh, okay, yep, that'd be why. It's a mean-spirited, irritating funeral for joy. How about it's Alan Gregory and go ahead and only address me as that from now on? Thanks so much. Oh, shut up, you little pleb. I've mentioned Family Guy once or twice in my videos before. Like Family Guy, Family Guy, Family Guy, Family Guy, and a Family Guy, Family Guy, and Shut and up, peace, mate. Brian Griffin. Family Guy, this sucks sucks like, like family, family Guy, Family Guy. Okay, maybe quite a few times. And I know what you're thinking. Family Guy? Really? There's a lot of worse adult animation out there. Why rank this among the worst, you stupid Phantom Strider clone? And yep, I actually do dislike Family Guy quite a lot. So much so, in fact, that it's my least favorite Seth MacFarlane show of the three. Yes, even worse than The Cleveland Show. See, Family Guy uses every cheap trick in the book in pursuit of getting laughs. No matter how idiotic or horrible that trick may be. It reminds me of that one kid who comes up with an offensive joke and then goes to school the next day and tries to squeeze that joke into any situation at all, no matter how irrelevant. It has shockingly backwards morals, a surprising amount of filler for such a big show. And the episodes? They can't just focus on one story at all, like dang! Can you actually write a plot that lasts for a whole 21 minutes for a change? The cinematography is an abomination. They use the same frickin' editing tricks all the dang time. That zoom is used for everything! And you know what I really hate about Family Guy? The way they constantly have to remind you where the darn scene is taking place every second. Like, okay, yes, we get this is in the Griffin's house now, we probably could have started the scene in the house and nobody would have been lost. I know that seems a bit nitpicky, but it just bothers me so much for how frequent it is. I find this show mainly just bland, and it tries to cover that up with just cheap offensive jokes. To be fair, there are some actually pretty good Family Guy episodes out there. I'd even go so far to say that at its best, Family Guy is charming and pretty humorous. But boy oh boy are those episodes far and few in between. At its worst, it's a hypocritical, egotistical, and nasty show. For me, that's plenty of reason to put it as one of the worst. You know what sitcom I really liked? Father Ted. Those in the States may have not heard of this one, but Father Ted was a really big deal over here in the UK. Well, the show followed the hilarious misadventures of an Irish priest that life didn't really ever shine too brightly on. It had dozens of iconic moments, and was written in such a way that everyone could enjoy it, despite its somewhat controversial nature. Still holds up to this day pretty well, too. The show was such an influence on British and Irish culture, in fact, that someone decided to make a sort of animated tribute to it. This is where Pope Town came to be, advertised as South Park meets Father Ted. How did it end up going down? Well, look at the bloody video title, what do you think? This show had a very rocky start. It was originally commissioned for the UK channel BBC3, and to my understanding, BBC3 then refused to air it, leaving it to air overseas in Australia. 
Uh, fair enough, mate, fair enough. But then it came out on DVD over here? I don't freaking know. It sounds like nobody would want this thing because of its super controversial nature of being a show where the Pope has a mindset of a spoiled child. Either that or they took one look at the episodes and came to the same conclusion I did. It stinks. It certainly doesn't help the show that the animation is choppy and appears to struggle with any sort of complex movements. But by far the worst thing about Pope Town is the Pope himself. Oh my gosh, he's so freaking annoying! Hearing him laugh at the end of the opening credits made me think, that can't be his voice, surely. Not only is his voice irritating beyond belief, but the hyperactive spoiled Brad Dahl has ramped up to 100 for this dude. He's the cause of almost everything that goes wrong in every episode and actively hurts the show more than anything else. That's pretty bad when he's supposed to be the main appeal. The backgrounds are all done in this ugly CG that makes it look like a bad PS1 game and just ugh. Each episode of Pope Town begins with a live-action Catholic school scene, where we see that the Pope Town is nothing more than a teenager's bored doodle. I guess that's a way for the writers to be all like, well of course the show is bad, some bored school kid's writing it. <laughs> Give me father's head instead of this any day. <laughs> Honey? Honey! What? It's the sheeplets. They won't shut up and fall asleep. Have you tried putting on Legends of Chamberlain High? That puts everyone to sleep. <laughs> Dang, and I thought the Cleveland show was a bad attempt at trying to appeal to a black audience. But that! That just wasn't fair! Legends of Chamberlain Heights is a shabby snorefest about generic as heck teenagers trying to be cool in high school. Whoa man, trying to overwhelm me with that originality over here! Speaking of other adult cartoons, Legends seems to be taking a lot of influence from South Park, especially in how everything moves and is animated. The jokes aren't even really jokes here, they're mainly just pointing out stereotypes and damn is there a lot of exposition. Can't let the audience forget what's going on! On, better explain everything over again every scene, haha! <laughs> By the way, this is a YouTube video you're currently watching where I'm talking about Legends of Chamberlain Heights. Okay, you got that? Good. It's trying to be all like, look how black this is. We know how things really go down in high school and we're not afraid to show it. Shit, that's what I'm talking about, my nicks! Ah! Put this show on with a few friends and it's quite unlikely they'll be asking for more afterwards. Hey guys, wanna watch some more Legends of Chamberlain Heights? Don't know. That sounds really boring. What irks me the most about Legends is the way that it tries to force character bonding moments on us by simply having the characters laugh. It has the nerve to try and give us that heartwarming ending by the sunset that's all like, the world is a messy place, but at least we have our friendships. Like, no, you have to earn that kind of ending. You can't just have friends laugh together, leave it and pretend they have some rich relationships. Get out of here with that trash. Legends! What's that nutty flavor? That would be all the peanuts, cashews, walnuts, and macadamia nuts that are in there. Courtesy of the Nut Shack. It's the Nut Shack. It's the nut if you were a fairly active YouTube member last year and like memes, then the chances are you probably already have heard of the Nut Shack. Thanks to these two dirtbags, the show, well, more specifically its theme song, became a very popular joke with hundreds upon hundreds of edits. Little did I know that one day I'd find an actual episode of the show after the theme song, and it was not fun. In all honesty, it was actually a pretty weird feeling watching that dang theme song before an actual episode. It's like when you see your friend working at a supermarket, and, and then you give them an awkward smile because you don't want to distract them, but at the same time, you want them to respond to your existence. What do you mean that doesn't make sense? That makes perfect sense. What are you, what are you talking about? After finally sitting down and watching The Nut Shack, I've come to the inevitable conclusion that it sucks. Hard. The characters were annoying, the pacing is more up and down than my upload schedule, the camera angles are dreadful, and the animation is beyond terrible. And yet, all these features make it oddly watchable. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's entertaining per se, this is a list of the worst adult cartoons after all. But there was always that feeling of wanting to keep going just to see how insanely bad and dumb it gets. In fact, I had the exact same feeling before whilst playing Sonic 06 a while back. Yes, it was frustrating, yes, it was broken beyond belief, yes, it was overall a huge car crash, but I still wanted to keep going. Did you ever get that feeling? Now, I would complain about the fact that I couldn't follow what on earth was going on in any of these episodes, but I think it kind of works in the show's favour. It doesn't need to make much sense, honestly. 
A plot would probably hurt any of the show's appeal as an ironic cringe fest. Yes, there is a little bit of style going on here, as Rebel Taxi pointed out in his review, and I can appreciate that to a degree as well, but some of these scenes look like utter garbage. I mean, look at stuff like this. Everything looks like a bad point and click adventure game. Goes on for utterly ages and looks super awkward when they try and pull off any motion of any sort. The character's hands make him look like Captain Quark from Ratchet and Clank. Now that, that, that was definitely something important to point out. The voice acting is not only ear bleed worthy, especially for Phil and Horat, but it's also really dang low quality too. I'm so sorry to wake you. Gosh, who would even want to partake in joke videos about this stupid cartoon? It's, my it's the nut shack. Day of the week. Okay. Nut <laughs> Okay, so anyways, on to the next one. <laughs> I remember being at a sleepover one time with a few friends. We were showing each other videos on YouTube, and someone decided to pull up an episode of Mr. Pickles. It got a few whoa that was gross reactions and a few laughs from some, but I remember hating that thing. Maybe I have no sense of humour, I don't know. That was my first experience with Mr. Pickles, and let me tell you, watching it now, time hasn't changed a thing. It's a show about a satanic dog, I think. I don't really think they specify what Mr. Pickle's deal actually is. He's just used as a character to supply loads of gore and twisted imagery to the viewer. Well, he's evil, that's for certain. No reason needed, really. Just gotta put in that Satanism to be even more hardcore. The grandpa's onto the dog's evil shenanigans and the family are dumb and the mum has big breasts. Why do I bring that last one up? Because they don't stop referencing them! No, like, I'm legit serious. Her character is that she has big boobs. Jeez, I'm glad shows like Mr. Pickles could show us really how great animation can be. What a disgrace. The show is very fast-paced, and that makes the whole story feel very rushed in this occasion. At least it's over quicker, I suppose. Also, the hardcore metal theme song makes me want to die! It's one of the most dull, heavy metal songs I think I've ever heard. But do... Do the creators of the show want to share with us something at all? What with all this horrific imagery and mindless sex and gore shoved into the cartoon anywhere possible. I didn't find this show funny, and I didn't find it even that outrageous. You start to numb out all the pointless sex and violence when it's used as much as it is here. I'm not trying to sound super edgy by saying that shows like this don't get to me. Believe me, I've been scared and grossed out by plenty of shows and movies, and you'll see that soon on this list. But Mr. Pickles, you don't make me laugh, you don't shock me in the slightest, and the most offensive thing about you is how your show looks. As far as I can tell, Mr. Pickles' goal is to disgust and offend as many viewers as possible. Ha ha, congratulations, you spent loads of time and money making a cartoon to make people feel uncomfortable? I mean, sure, it might be funny to someone just to see how gory and sexual this cartoon can get, but anything past that? It's shows like this I genuinely don't understand why people would want to make them. Well, that stinks. Doing a bit of research for this list, one of the biggest shocks for me was finding out that Brickleberry was actually generally liked by a large number of people. Each to their own and everything. It's cool if you can get a few laughs out of Brickleberry, but for me, it was just bad. It's overflowing with tasteless humour, bland visuals, bland characters, bland episode formulas, bland everything, basically. Like, for real, what's the draw of this cartoon? It's an adult animation about employees of a park. Other than that, there's nothing distinct about Brickleberry that I could find. No original jokes, no memorable characters or locations. Heck, the only thing I could remember about this show up until making the video was how darn unappealing the art style is. Particularly the backgrounds. Look how freaking empty they are. They look like they were drawn on MS Paint. They almost look as bad as my old thumbnails. You know what show has a similar concept and does it really freaking well? Regular show. An actually entertaining and funny show that I'm sure loads of adults would prefer despite being on a children's network. My boy Tom Kenny seems to be the only one putting any drive into the voice acting as well. And oh my gosh are the edgy jokes shoehorned in there. So much so that they rarely have anything to do with what's going on. It's like if I wrote my script like this. Man, I love video games. They're a great escape from reality. Chinese people are the worst though. They do math stuff. I hate them. The worst character in Brickleberry is undoubtedly the little bear. The joke is that he can talk? I don't get it. He's a jerk and never says anything remotely likable or funny. Oh, I do get it. He's this show's Brian Griffin, huh? One show's popular and has a talking animal. Better give our show one so that it's funny too. Well, at least a show this poorly structured couldn't have lasted that long, right? Wait, it had how many seasons? England's generally a very boring and dull country, but not nearly as exciting as you Yanks out there. 
And it flippin' shows in the cartoons we try to make, oh my gosh. While yeah, as a Brit, I am pretty proud of some of the animation we spawned, like Wallace and Gromit and such. But then there's stuff like full English, which makes me just want to put on a southern accent and make believe I'm American. On behalf of Britain, I would like to personally apologize for our take on Family Guy. And that's basically the only way I can put it. It's just a British Family Guy. We got the tasteless, easy digs on celebrities that any edgy 13-year-old could have thought up. We got voice acting so bad that I struggled to even understand what some of the characters were saying with no background music. Especially whoever voiced the dad, Edgar. Jeez, man, get a bit closer to the mic next time, okay? They got long silences for laughs at the end of each scene, which, let's be honest, is mainly just filled with silence since nobody's laughing at it. But something I didn't mention in my review of the show last year was Squidge. The Squidge is the imaginary friend of Edgar's father-in-law, Ken. He's a big green blob that shows up to just make a silly voice and say naughty words. Jeez, are you sure this show is meant for adults? Full English seems to think it knows what's going on poking fun at society in the way people act very often. And when I say poking fun, I mean dragging out a single joke for the entire episode length and adding absolutely nothing. Try hard offensive humor that falls hard in its face, it's a bloody mess! I walk up into the cafe, see the menu, and I'm flipping triggered by full English breakfasts now. If you want to know my extended thoughts on the show, as I mentioned, I reviewed it a little while back, in which I stated how I was actually excited for full English upon hearing about it. It could have been relatable and hilarious with the right amount of care gone into it. Too bad it focused so hard on being a copy of Family Guy that it forgot to do that. It's the worst British cartoon by far. What an embarrassment. Sorry again, Americans, but you're welcome for Doctor Who. Why don't you just die? A complaint that's always bothered me is when people find a certain cartoon weird and say that the creators or writers were on drugs, apparently. Just because something's strange, that doesn't automatically make it bad. I have a lot of respect for shows like Adventure Time, Clone High, Ed and Eddie, and other cartoons that have an unconventional sense of humour. Why not spice things up a bit? There's so much you can visually do with animation, and I love seeing just how imaginative things can get. Adventure Time and Rick and Morty writers on drugs? Please. Those shows have some pretty well put together jokes and some darn clever writing. Then we have King Star King. What is King Star King, you may ask? Well, if you don't already know, it's an Adult Swim show where uh, there's a guy and he uh, goes to the waffle shop and. Uh... Okay, let's not beat around the bush any further. This show's story and plot just don't even exist. It's literally just disgusting imagery on a screen for nine minutes. Was there a story in any of these? I don't know, have you watched this thing? I'm not saying it has to be like Avatar The Last Airbender levels of plot over here. I just want to know what the heck's going on. I can't think of any word better to describe King Star King than mindless. At least this thing is very creative how gross it is, but damn is it disturbing and wrong on every level. I feel like I need to wash my brain after every episode of King Star King. It's not like, ew, that guy threw up, I'm gonna rate this a zero. No, it's like full-on animated, hardcore sexual imagery, brutal violence, and outright disturbing gory imagery. I have many questions. Number one, who on earth signed up for this? Number two, how on earth did this air on television? Number three, why am I watching this? It's the strangest piece of animation I've ever seen. I know stuff like Brickleberry is much less interesting in general, but I'd rather a show be boring than screwed up as heck. What else can I say? It's by far the most crazy, ludicrous, gross piece of animation I've ever seen. The question is though, what could be worse than this? What I was going to put at the number one spot was a fairly difficult choice for this list. The definition of what exactly makes something the worst differs from person to person. Some may find Brickleberry or Full English the worst because of the blandness, or something like Legends of Chamberlain Heights because of how boring and unentertaining it is, or even something like King Star King because of how it literally makes no sense. But after struggling with it in my head for a while, I came to a decision that may be a little bit underwhelming, purely for the fact that this show has topped my last countdown for how awful it is. But I can't deny that it is indeed deserving of this spot. The number one worst adult cartoon I have ever seen is... Ren and Stimpy, adult party cartoon. Call me boring and predictable all you like, but I just had to, guys. I honestly found it that bad. A lot of people love Ren and Stimpy, and that's awesome. It's a very expressive and experimental cartoon. The animation was mesmerizing, and the humor was very strange, yet wacky and hilarious. It was one of Nickelodeon's biggest hits, in my opinion. The man behind Ren and Stimpy, John Crickfalusi, was obviously a very talented man that knew what he was doing. Though he caused big problems for others, being infamously difficult to work with, eventually getting him fired from his own creation. 
He's since worked on other projects, but getting fired by Nickelodeon wasn't the end of him working on Ren and Stimpy. In 2003, he created Adult Party Cartoon for the cable network Spike. Something I always found intriguing was that John seemed to prefer writing for Adult Party Cartoon than the original series from what I've seen. We started thinking up new ideas. Within a week and a half, we realized the new ideas were a lot funnier than the old ones. A lot of the censorship issues that we had to worry about when we were doing kids programming were pretty much gone. Ren is still an asshole, Stimpy's still retarded. Sometimes in entertainment, it's not always about what you can see, but what you can't. I always preferred it when cartoons primarily for kids worked their way around the senses, often having to come up with some super creative ideas to make subtle references that the adults could understand and laugh at, while still not alienating the younger viewers. I feel as though this applies to a lot of forms of entertainment. A good horror story, for example, often uses the unknown as the scariest aspect of them. This is ironically something the original Ren and Stimpy series did very well too. I ask you, why ruin that? Just because you can add swearing and violence and sexual themes, it doesn't mean you have to. What was the point of Adult Party Cartoon? Was anyone asking to take away the creativity around the censors, the hilarious jokes, anything and everything that made the original Ren and Stimpy such a likeable cartoon? It's a Ren and Stimpy cartoon that somehow misses the point of Ren and Stimpy. It feels like such a step backwards. Of course, this reason alone isn't why I put it at number one. There are six episodes of this abomination, but episode two is what puts it above the rest. Ren Seeks Help is the most vile, uncomfortable, disgusting, sickening piece of animation I have ever seen. We learn about Ren's childhood in the episode, and it shows the audience in detail Ren murdering and outright torturing innocent bugs and animals. It's basically torture treated as comedy, and it is just as bad as it sounds. Why? Why bother making such a horrendous cartoon? Ren is one of the most unforgivable creatures in any cartoon in this episode, in my opinion. And what for? Just because someone wanted to show their power without the senses. Well done, Adult Party Cartoon. Well done for ruining such an iconic cartoon duo in favor of shock value. I'm sorry, Stimpy. I don't know why I do these things to you. This has been Torchy, and thanks a bunch for watching.